This is the Criterion Creeps podcast, and tonight we're talking about Yi Yi from the year 2000, directed by Edward Yang, and we are joined by friend of the show, Sugarhead. Hello. Hi. Uh, there's no tagline for this film, sadly. I, mm-hmm. I, feel, I feel we're being cheated on that front. Uh, but yeah. a synopsis, a single sentence, so elegant. Each member of a family in a Taipei, sorry, in Taipei, asks hard questions. Wow. I just added an A for some reason. Each member of a family in Taipei asks hard questions about life's meaning as they live through everyday quandaries. Wow. Deep stuff. That's it. Deep stuff. Yeah. So, Yi Yi, uh, this is a movie. Uh, very well regarded. It has been on you know various top 250 lists on Letterboxd of movies you should watch. Um, I think mm-hmm. often when you look up Criterion Films and you sort it by ratings, this is in that uh, upper echelon of movies. And I would say that it's probably one of the highest rated Criterion Films that I had never seen before. And, and what? Uh, <laughs> I beg your pardon. <laughs> I was gonna. Well, Jarrett, I was gonna say it's higher rated than Gertrude. Uh, even higher rated than Gertrude. <laughs> okay, that's all I was gonna say. That's all I wanted to know. Yeah, you just wanted to get that out. I just wanted to get that out there before we yeah. get into it. Yeah, for real. Uh, it currently is on the uh, official top two hundred and fifty narrative feature films. Um, which mm. number one is uh, once again Parasite after it was, I mm. believe, temporarily overtaken by Everything Everywhere All at Once for uh, for a minute. Mm. Interesting. But okay. It's, but, it's, okay. but it's battled back. Um, and Andrew Yang's got at least two films on this list because there's also an, another one of his films because I've never seen a single Andrew Yang film until this week, uh, Brighter Summer Day. <laughs> Which mm-hmm. is a future creep, and Yi Yi, according to this list, is number sixteen. RJ, if you can believe yeah. this, it's above the Dark Knight. Yeah, but like in terms of like like societal context, like did it make that much of like a like a <laughs> historical like uh, impact, like the Dark Knight did? <laughs> is there I, a Yee I, I don't, statue? I, I, is don't, what I'm asking. <laughs> I, 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 I don't. I don't know MCU fan. Even despite the have... fact, that... <laughs> do they Talk have? I, 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 I can't. I, I actually cannot believe how often I read that that like criticism about like cultural impacts, which is actually this... it, it doesn't get really lobbed. I don't think at Yee Yee because those people don't even know what this movie is. But I mm. definitely they always talk about it with Avatar. <laughs> they really hate that that movie made so much money. Um, and it's like, well, you know, it complicates uh, Endgame's uh, clear win. Yeah. <laughs> or some, or some complicates. shit. Complicates. Yeah, so, yeah, it really makes it so it's not a slam dunk. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, I would say this is a, a film and not an amusement park ride. Like, uh, Marty? One. Martin Scorsese, yeah. Uh, so mm-hmm. it's, it's Marty to his friends, sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Right. Well, you know, I, what's, what's, what's actually surprising me is uh, one film titled Ron is also, uh, <laughs> it's rated 32, which is uh, you know, double uh, 16, ooh. which is where uh, Yee right. finds itself. Interesting. So, Next so, time I'm on Parasite. All right. Yep. That's, uh, you got a thousand, <laughs> thousand movies to go. That that'll go by like in a month. That'll yeah. be fast. That'll and be and fast. you and you did just watch Come and See, which is number two. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's, I don't. That's big time. I don't think I'm gonna watch that one again. Uh, no. 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 <laughs> we can no, let Sam Loveland on for that one. That's uh, a one and done. Yeah, you better get Sam number one on that one. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. Beautiful. 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 So yeah. Uh, but Sugarhead, you it's like. Some several months ago, I don't even remember when, when uh, RJ had mentioned to me that uh, you'd be interested at some point being on, and this was the movie that you first mm-hmm. brought up. Mm-hmm. Your number one pick. So, why is that? 
Well, I think this was like maybe the first like Criterion movie I was like super consciously aware of and watched. Like, um, I think I watched it because it was available on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And, uh, like, the quality of the subtitles was um, good enough that I could, you know, uh, watch it. And uh, uh, I was, like, pretty stoked about it. I think I had actually just started listening to um, the Criterion Creeps podcast. And I was like, mm -hmm. let, me, uh, let me get into some of these Criterions. And I was like, oh, this one keeps coming up and it's got a uh I'll, I'll be honest like the poster um is very uh aesthetic and i was like yeah all right let's do this one so fired it up first time and uh i mean i'm not giving away too much here when i say that i i really like it um i think it's a really great movie mm -hmm. um, so when i saw that it was uh you know coming up in the in the creep among all the uh the bergmans and the whatevers um i was like hey when uh when you guys get there let me know <laughs> the bergmans or whatever the bergmans <laughs> and the altmans and the ron mans the Rons. <laughs> of the world yeah uh, <laughs> goddamn ronald yeah <laughs> Well, uh, and RJ, you've, well, that's good. Yeah. You know, and RJ, you've never seen this movie before, either. No, no, come God, on, God, no. I don't. I don't watch movies. Come on. <laughs> we just spent an hour wasting Reese's precious time in this fifteen-hour-long podcast episode <laughs> about how I only watch Star Trek now. So I don't. I don't watch movies. Right. So no, I have never seen this before, but I've heard about it. Yep. Yep. I've heard about it. Well. Now we've uh, we've knocked it off the list once and for all. So what's this? How does this movie play out? Well, it opens up with a wedding. It's kind of like The Godfather. Oh, oh. Yeah. and what about four weddings and a funeral? It's like that too. <laughs> Very similar. All the all the great movies they open up with weddings and they end with funerals. Mm -hmm. It's like mm -hmm. life. It is kind of like life. Uh, so the movie doesn't really have a plot per se it's just a bunch of narratives that kind of interweave between this family um so we've got is it nj is the the patriarch of the family yeah yeah so he's married in sorry he's like he's married into the family I yeah should, yeah and so you've got the, his wife who is sort of a non-character uh, right you, you see her very little she kind of um, is dealing with the fact that her mother has fallen ill into a coma and she can't, she can't handle mm -hmm. that. And she, she leaves, uh, mm -hmm. pretty well for the duration of the entire film until the spoilers, inevitable funeral at the end that I've already mentioned. So he, uh, is at the wedding for his wife's brother. So his brother-in-law who is getting married to a woman that he has recently, knocked up and he did, he's doing the right thing, but it's, it's, there's a lot of, um, I don't know the Asian luck kind of, uh, superstitions are about like, this is the good day. This is a good day to have a wedding corresponding to all these things. So there's a couple comments about that off the bat. Um, and so he is also keeping an eye on his young son. Um, what is young son's name? Uh, Yang Yang. Yang Yang. Okay. So that's Yang Yang. Uh, his wife is Min Min. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so he's kind of keeping an eye on Yang Yang. Yang Yang's getting bullied by girls. Taking, Frig. Making, <laughs> making him take his shoe off and then like throwing it 10 feet away. And then they run away <laughs> giggling. And he's real depressed about it. He's That's the saddest shit I ever seen, he's so, man. He's so, he's, so, he's so downtrodden. It's like, yeah, let's go get your shoe. Well, could you imagine a bunch of ladies bully you to take your shoe off? You have to throw it away well, and then imagine, you have to just go and get it. Well, imagine like being a younger kid, being in a school, and like you're taking a yeah. class and you're like doing a project where you have to build something with like candy, and then like oh. when it's all when it's all finished. <laughs> 
<laughs> like they, then yeah. there's like nothing but sugar at the bottom. Just like someone mm-hmm. t- t- takes it and dumps it on top of your head. I, I is, couldn't imagine. Yeah. Like think about that and like just think of what depressed he was. And then the abuse <laughs> continues to this day. What that, is it? What it, it's the exact same thing. What are they? Later? What are they? Start calling Yang Yang Shoe Boy or Shoey. <laughs> Unbelievable! I couldn't imagine something so horrible. Yeah, it'd be. It's disgusting, frankly. It is. It is. People should. People. People gotta look at themselves. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Look sad. Look yourself in the mirror. <laughs> sad. 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 Um, oh. So the brother-in-law to uh, NJ is uh, AD. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And so he has ended a relationship with this other woman that he was with for a really long time. But it seems like this guy uh, was kind of a uh, he. He likes women a lot, and a little bit of philandering, a little canoodling going on. Um, he just, he just. Uh, can't help himself and this is the one that he's wound up with it oh she got pregnant so he's got to do the right thing so Mm -hmm. he broke up with her she's uh not happy about this she kind of crashes the wedding gets uh tossed out this is of course she apologizes to the the grandmother uh (laughs) saying like i'm sorry i'm letting you down but she seems to also have a, a lot of the. She's like the smart business person that he also had this relationship with, uh, business and romantically, and so he's going to wind up having to go back to her and ask for more money with their AOL and Yahoo stocks because it's 1999. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I, imagine the things that will movies that will exist. Where they're talking about big stocks and like things that we think will never change. And then you know, 20 years from now, be like, Oh yeah. Remember when uh, everybody was talking about Facebook still and Twitter, Bitcoin, Bitcoins, blockchain. That's never going away. It's what about, to what the about moon. non-fungibles? It's all, all to the moon. Well, you're, you're huge on blockchain. Oh, all, 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 it, it no, it's totally different than Yahoo and AOL, RJ. I, it, it's I, totally different? Absolutely different. There's, wow. There's, there's no similarities whatsoever. Man, I had no idea. I've, I've, yeah. RJ, have you heard about Web 3.0? Holy cow, I haven't. But like... Uh, sure. Web I'm not 3. Gonna lie. I'm not going to lie to you, Jared. I, I didn't think it was going to be something that would last, but the way you're describing mm-hmm. it... <laughs> sign me up. Sign you up. Sign me up, buddy. That's well, all I have. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Very good. So um, there's a wedding. Um, so Mary Mint has had uh, the NJ. Uh, well, he takes his son over to a, a McDonald's for a, for a hamburger, I guess, because he doesn't like any of the wedding food. To you know, to raise his spirits, that's the place you take kids. They love McDonald's. Mm-hmm. Um, he's in the hotel lobby, and he runs into an old flame. <clears throat> His old uh, high school, college girlfriend, who he hasn't spoken to for a long time, there's some sort of suggestion that uh, there was tension uh, around their breakup. That he just kind of no, he ghosted her. Uh, he just he just dumped her. We'll find out later on why that is. Um, and some name cards are exchanged. You know about name cards. Uh, unfamiliar. Can you describe? Uh, it's like a it's like a business <laughs> card with your name on it. Kind of like an American it, Psycho. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I see. I see. Even has Who's a got watermark. The... Oh. No. Uh, so Grandma's not feeling well. Grandma gets mm-hmm. taken home. Mm-hmm. Grandma's really not doing well though. She uh, she takes she has a fall, and she has to mm-hmm. be taken to the hospital, and she's in a coma, and everyone's sad. Did you say she has to be taken home? She gets taken home from the wedding. She gets taken home, and then while she's at, she was taken out the trash, right? Well, is where she, she, she found stroke. she she had a yeah a fall. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and no one knew why. She, why did she take out the garbage? It doesn't make any sense. She doesn't mm-hmm. need to take out the garbage. Yeah, and and that's what builds up the uh, the dilemma that our young lady has because she says, "Did I forget to take out the garbage?" Mm. Becomes a big thing. Comes a big thing. It's a thing. It's a thing. So yeah, Sad. and then there's also the the older child of NJ, the the, mm-hmm. the daughter, and mm-hmm. her her adventures with her 
friend that lives next door and mm-hmm. that that friend's uh kind of dissolving relationship with a boy which seems a like boy. A, yeah with, there's a lot of fighting there's a lot of fighting under uh underpasses mm-hmm. where are they fighting underpasses you know about those I know about underpants, but not underpasses. What, what I know, know about the kind that what? can breathe. Well, what do you know about condoms? Not much. Okay. Well, so I'm Catholic. I, I see. <laughs> so it's just nothing at all. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Nothing ever. Right. Nothing. We're good. Right. Mm. <laughs> That's a good way to build a society. <laughs> oh yeah, it's a Catholic way. Yeah. Um. So. We go to um, Yang Yang and his his school days, um, and the the hard time he's getting from his one teacher, uh, the dean, with his uh, he's got his cane and he just likes to admonish children. I guess feel like a big man while also like becoming mm-hmm. very weirdly familiar with one of his female students. That very, guy's a real he's, prick. He's, he's very encouraging of her. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, but yeah, I have to say it's like so. This, so at one point, he's like, "There, we have to. There, we need to have a conversation about someone who's brought something to school." It's like someone brought a condom, and you, it's you, young man, who brought a condom to school, and he takes his pocket. It's like, what's this? And it's like very clearly a balloon. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's like, oh yeah, it's a balloon. And the guy's like, "Very good." <laughs> so I was like, "This guy's a fucking idiot." He's, well, he said he's like. Remember this for next time. Yeah. And then they go, what? Mm-hmm. You know, huh? What no. do you mean, remember? But Yeah. Sad. Uh, sad. And then we've got uh, back to uh, the the brother-in-law, who is AD, who's already like going back to his ex-girlfriend. Uh, this is where we get that sweet conversation in the cafe. Who And she, of course, the, the old flame, has just had a like lunch, I guess, with... Um, the this guy's niece. What's her and what's her name? Uh, Ting Ting? T- is it Ting Ting? Ting Ting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, mm-hmm. uh, so yeah, that's Ting Ting. That's the NJ's older daughter. Uh, they just had a meeting because they're they're still family. They're still so close because they've been together for so long. Um, we had some bedside chats with a comatose grandmother. Um, everyone's trying to like, I guess, you know, try to be that one to like snap her out of this. And I mean, it's, it's, it's a depressing thing, I guess, talking to, uh, a a family member like this. Uh, we then get, so NJ, his stress in life is that his business is faltering, but also the reappearance of his, of his old flame, (laughs) Uh, has kind of like got his mind making those like what could have been sort of uh, processes. Uh, we get a, an ultrasound of, of a baby. There? Well, we get a voiceover narration of a uh, which which turns out to be a Taiwanese woman translating a Japanese man uh, talking about the philosophy of video games and story as old as time violent video games and there needs to be a transition from this I'm like who is this guy this is a uh, Miyamoto and I'm like so mm. so is this so is NJ so they, they never really explicitly say what the company makes or sells but it seems like they're like a Taiwanese video game company right yeah I think that's right yeah yeah or like, they're like some, or like software developer um, yeah. or hardware. It's, it's really not clear what it is. It's left kind of nebulous. Uh, other than they're like, well, we got to get, we got to get Ota. We got to get Ota mm-hmm. from Japan, but it's, it's going to cost a lot of money, but we got to impress him. But then there's also the vying factor that there's Eito, which is the Taiwanese knockoff. You can be like, yeah. we, we can do what Ota does, but we'll just do it. We'll, we'll do it for cheap. Um, I noted here, there were some very thick laptops, Oh yeah, uh, at that at that meeting, as you'd expect, the thickest. No. Hey Reese, which one of these uh, guys do you think is the Reggie's fill? Uh, fills a mech of uh, of all these guys. Oh. You know Reggie fills? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A mech. Oh, I'll, I'll get Jared a picture so he knows. Oh, I know, I know, who, I know who Reggie is. You do you yeah. know the mech version of Reggie? I, I do not know the mech version. I'll find you the mech version. Okay. <laughs> but who? Which one of these guys is Re- Reggie's fills a mech? Do you think? 
I think it's probably like NJ's boss. I think that's probably who it is. His, or his colleague. I don't know. The guy with glasses. The guy with the glasses. Yeah. Glasses. Yeah. Glasses. yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Those guys are dorks. <laughs> They are. Uh, Anyways, what was I, what were we talking about, Jared? Uh, a movie called Yee Yee. Oh yeah, Yee Yee. And so, of course, we've got uh, the uh, Ota, uh, the Japanese man, uh, hanging out with some pigeons too, because he's because ah. he's, he's kind of quirky. He's kind of quirky. He's kind of fun. Things outside you the know? box. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we get uh, introduction or introduced to. Uh, the, the next door neighbor Milf and her daughter. Um, you know about you know about Milf's sugarhead. No. <laughs> well, she, she, you... she, she... <laughs> I'm laughing at this Wait, are you... stuff that Jared's or RJ said. Okay, if you guys don't know, uh... you know you know Mega sixty four, right, Reese? You know yeah. Rocco. And do you know Mega 64, Jarrett? Vaguely, yeah. Okay, so Mega 64, they made a thing this, once. They this, made a joke this about... This nothing to do with anything, huh? Go, <laughs> go on. They made a joke... Well, we were talking about video games. So they made a joke about we Reggie Phils. And it was him as a mech. And then he, they actually got Reggie to be in the video. And he was a mech. And he was walking around shooting lasers out of his eyes and stuff. And then N- Nintendo actually liked it and then they made their officially licensed Reggie's Phil's a mech where he's a mech I just wanted to share that with you we were talking about (laughs) video games yee yee's heavy stuff Phil's a mech okay that's all I wanted to share that's it I'm I'm, I'm done well while you're talking about Reggie Phil's I'm talking about next door neighbor Milfs and their daughter um, oh sure who like sends sends their daughter away with um Ting Ting is like, yeah, I've got some, I got some, uh, some banging to do. Um, so mm-hmm. th- they get sent away. They go hang out at the New York Bagel. You know about, mm-hmm. you know about New York Bagels. Um, I do. I and do. There's some loudmouth young kids uh, laughing away. Uh, and then one of them apparently just got out of the army or is on leave from the army, and he's like, I've been in the army too long, and he, he goes for a lunge <laughs> uh, toward Ting Ting, and then his friends go, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> That's another night at the New York Bagel. Mm-hmm. Boys will be boys, hey, no. Jarrett? Mm-hmm. So <laughs> it's we, what they say. So we've got Oda, who uh, has two notable characteristics. One, he's got one of those like voice damaged box, like voice box damaged voices, where he talks very deeply like so. And then he also is rocking the Bill Gates look. Uh huh. Yeah, he's got the bowl Heavy, cut. He's got the very cool the, the sweater with the 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 collar shirt underneath the sweater. Mm-hmm. Not not just Bill Gates, but my wife. When your she was, your wife. My wife, when she was eight nine years old, identical. When actually, and Andy watched this with me, and she's like, "What is this? Me in grade two? And I was like, "Yeah, it is. We have pictures. She looks exactly like that guy when she was in like grade two, grade three. It was a cool look. It was a cool look. It was a cool, 1998. Shit, come on. You couldn't get better than that. No. So, well, it makes sense. It, uh, it, 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 it couldn't be a movie in uh, Pacific Asia without a karaoke bar scene. Very true. Oh yeah. And what a powerful scene. I don't know about you guys, but when you see, when you hear Moonlight Sonata in a mo- movie, do you go, yeah? That's the song he plays. Well, also, yeah, and, and some crowd pleasers uh, with some singing. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, we all love that. Um, but I think my, the the highlight of that whole scene for me was the the sad, desperate Taiwanese bartender uh, saying like, ah, "This guy's really good for business." Yeah, business hasn't been too good lately, and he's like, <laughs> "You should you should bring him around more." <laughs> it's like, whoa! It's like, what is? What is this like sad tale? It's like, yeah, this yeah, this like Japanese uh video game software designer is just gonna like hang out and play piano at your fucking bar forever because business is he bad. <laughs> yeah, he's going to He might. You never know. Yeah. Right. 
But, you know, uh, he's just um, forlorn, this uh, NJ, for and uh, a little uh, horny for his Chicago X. He's starting to make those... Um, those moves toward making the make, reaching out, making that phone call, talking about being oh, it's a good thing I didn't get you on the first call. I'd be all tongue tied otherwise. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, yeah. Because at this point, like, I don't his his wife. Because yeah, probably I don't know twenty minutes earlier in the movie, his wife. Uh, there's a few scenes of her in the office, and it's her like not dealing with uh, the sickness of their mother doing very well, and she has to like go. And I think in. Uh, on the Wikipedia uh, entry for this, it says that she goes to like a Buddhist retreat. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I've been there. <laughs> we've all been there. We've all been there. And yeah, at this point, it's like, I was like, huh, that, that mother seems to be a pretty minor figure uh, in this. Oh yeah. Sorry. She's not gone yet. This happens. That happens later. Um, it's yeah. Both, at this point in the story, it is just the the brother in law's antics, uh, the dad, the son, and the daughter. Uh, where I, where I feel like the the movie's business picks up is the introduction of the the camera, um, and mm. the, uh, the the pantless boy going around taking photos in the hallway, taking pictures of like corners of like the ceiling, um, mm-hmm. and that that's where I was like. Oh, I kind of want this movie just to be about uh, this kid being a photographer quite a lot, mm-hmm. um, and I'd want like an eighty-minute movie of that, and I, it would, and you'd have all the other stuff going on, but you just keep it really honed in on that because I feel, I felt like that was the most uh, compelling element of the uh, whole uh, litany of characters going on. That was the one where I was like, oh, I want more of this, and then of course that's the one where it completely <laughs> it drops the kid. For a really long time, uh, and it's mm-hmm. like, where, where is he? Where, where's my little guy? Mm-hmm. Where's Yang Yang? <laughs> he, he's the best. It's like I was saying when we uh, when Reese brought up Minari earlier. Little movie movies about like little kids that you're just like, man, I want to hang out with this kid. This kid rules, and uh, this kid in this movie does rule. And uh, he's, he's I o- Ozuian. <laughs> Yeah, mm-hmm. he is like Ozu, uh, like yeah, totally. kids in Ozu movies, and I like uh, I like the way he talks about stuff too. Or it's like, it's not like writers pretending to th- talk about how like how kids talk. He does sound like a kid, but he just like when they're like, "Why do you take pictures of this stuff?" It's like Cause people don't look at this stuff. Mm-hmm. He's like, "What do you What yeah. do you want me to tell you?" He's like, "You can't see the back of your head, so why wouldn't you want me to take a picture of it for you?" Where you're just like, "That's." That seems more genuine to how kids actually talk. Yeah. It's not a kid. Yeah. It's like, well, really, the pictures are the real friendship. And you're just like, <laughs> five-year-olds don't talk like that, okay? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that kid's awesome. I, I love oh. that kid. Uh, then, then I just have a note here, direct, uh, directionless dad. Because he's just kind of like, oh, yeah. being all sad. I don't even know if I want to be in this business anymore. I don't know what <laughs> I want to do. Uh, mm-hmm. But then you have, like, yeah, you have the... Uh, <clears throat> Yang Yang being harassed by a mob of girls because kids suck. And this is like when he's he's gone to the uh, photography store to get some more film mm-hmm. rolls for his camera, which I think is cool. Uh, and mm-hmm. then you get to, then you get to see the photographs that he's taking. It's like clearly I don't think this child took these photographs. Uh, these these are like pretty uh, amazing photographs, like the colors and stuff like that. It's like hmm, and but of course. Uh, teacher, he's a he's a fucking moron. He's like mocking it. He's a real uh, he's like someone I know talking about art's meaningless, and it's like, oh look, we got mm. look, looks looks like we got a real genius here. <laughs> mm. and, and he's handing out the photos to all the girls, and they're like mocking him, and like he, it's like you're you fucking idiot. <laughs> is he saying that art is potentially? Does he ever mention it whether art is real or not? He doesn't go. He, I think it's implied. Or like, I, I infer that that's the case. You know, when you assume, Jarrett, you know what that does. Mm-hmm. I just, I, I expect more from teachers. You know, they should be more encouraging to students in all things that Jap- they pursue. Japanese education systems is one of the greatest, one of the best in the world, Jarrett. Like, well, I this mean, is this is the Taiwanese clearly. education system. A Taiwanese education system is one of the best in the world. I okay. was thinking of Ota again. You know, Ota. Well, he's clearly a. A sign of the Japanese education system. Where does Taiwan rank in education? Let's look. 
Ty, you guys can continue talking okay. while I look up uh, Taiwan's education. Then, 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 then you know what else we get? We get Yang Yang sitting on a toilet. You know, you know about this. What does he do there? I don't know. It's it's left to the imagination. Is he going number one? Is he going number two? Unknown. We'd have to check in with the Sams. Hmm. So after you take a bath, Matt, this is a question for the both of you. Uh, do you all uh, run around naked after? Uh, after a bath no. or a shower, whatever your uh, whatever uh, floats your boat. Hmm. I mean, there are frequently times, and I do have to admit that I forget my towel. Hmm. And I, there's been more times than I would like to admit that I've not only forgotten my towel, but I'm showering on the floor that is opposite of where my clothing is. Because sometimes I wake up a lot earlier than Andrea does, so I shower downstairs just so I don't wake her up, you know. I don't want to shower right beside where she's sleeping. So I'll come downstairs to shower, and I'll go, shit, I forgot my towel. So I do have to run upstairs naked. <laughs> wow. Wow. How many times has this happened? Countless. Well, how about in the new? How about in the new place? Countless. Okay. It, it, it has happened. It is. We've lived here for two weeks, and it has happened countless times. Where Andrea actually made a point. She was like, "Again," and I was like, "I forgot." <laughs> Just running naked, you know, well, slipping around. Like that sound. No, no. Well, not not with my. My my toner, Jarrett. That oh, witch hazel smooths right. things out so yeah. well, you know. <laughs> Keep, keeps it There's... keeps it tight. Yeah, it keeps things tight, man. No no problem. No problem. Mm, yeah. Uh, then we get a little uh, surprise, little kid peen. That's good. Uh, <clears throat> this is followed up with uh, uh, the, the the brother-in-law. Um, uh, Ad, he's he he goes over. Uh, uh, to a lady friend's house, and uh, he just chills out, watching watching some porno in his underpants. Yeah, <laughs> uh, quite weird. You you, that a, is, you, I, you a fan? So I I find like Ad's uh, or Ad's storyline like it's out of all of them in the movie. Mm-hmm. I find his to be like the the least compelling and interesting out of all of them but i mean yeah that <laughs> he's just a i don't know yeah whatever <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like he, he's a weird duck i like when the i'm yeah. not sure if it's like a security guard at the building that he's being shown around at i think he calls him like just call a fatso you see how your wife you yeah. see how your girlfriend's uh treats me so nice mm-hmm. it's like yeah, whoa I, He's what a... like very like obviously like comedic relief mm-hmm. type of mm-hmm. character in it. And it's right. like ah uh, well, whatever. He's definitely a product of the seventeenth education system in the world from the twenty twenty eighteen review of Worldwide Educating for the Future Index. What's number Taiwan one? ranked Finland, uh... followed by Switzerland. Mm-hmm. New Zealand, Sweden, and Canada. Mm. Singapore was seventh with Germany, and uh, yeah, Taiwan was seventeenth. China was twenty second. So, well, you know why? That's John Cena because what because the because is. the teachers are being terrorized with people throwing uh, water balloons at their heads. <laughs> yeah. If, so, Jared, if you were a teacher and you got a water balloon, would you would you would you go for it? Go get them. Yeah, would you, would you like, get them? Like work them over a little bit? Well, I don't want to specify on anything specific, but like, what would you do to retaliate? I don't, don't know. I I haven't received the proper training um, from the proper uh, professionals, so I, oh, okay. I I wouldn't I wouldn't want to uh, find myself in that position. That's fair. That's fair. But if you were hypothetically speaking, though, I mean, what what would you do? Who me? Yeah, I would handle it coolly calmly and collectively i would ask them why they feel they need to act out in such a way jared it's a why do you feel like you need to do these things you you, you wouldn't just strangle them with the torn balloon <laughs> wrapper <laughs> so, i 
I would. I wouldn't talk. Yeah, yelling. You think? Yeah, you wouldn't talk. That's not creepy. I would listen. <laughs> oh, <laughs> to their to their gasps for air. Yes, I wouldn't talk. I'd listen. That's what Marilyn Manson said, right? He only got punched in the head in Creepsville's Denny's, which was news a while ago. <laughs> mm-hmm. right, right, right by that Burger King where the people were sleeping in the basement. Yes. People don't understand that our our little town comes up in world news way more than it should. Oh, yeah. Way, way more frequently than it should. Yeah. And it's weird. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. So yeah, we had the dumping water on the teacher, but it's like, there's no real arc to that either. It just kind of happens and it's like, that's just come up. But I guess it does lead to, um, them like when they, when they cheese it and they run off and they hide in Mm. like the, the one science theater, uh, I guess the attraction, I guess that Yang Yang starts feeling for his bully emerges, um, mm-hmm. and, where he's, and there's like the one scene where he's looking at the projected screen and talking about thunder is the, some think that thunder is the origins of life. Uh, and talking about acids, RJ, you know, about Oh, those? I know about acids. I know about bases too. Ooh. I also know about cringe, right? Right. Right. Reese. <laughs> acids, bases, and cringe. <laughs> I know about that too. I know about that too. Once in a while, <laughs> just once in a while. Anyways, <laughs> uh, let's see here. And then more of this next door neighbor. I'm trying to read what my note here is next door neighbor friend fighting with her boyfriend. Friends sort of slinking around under passes going for lunches. <laughs> so I, I feel that like 80s arc is more interesting than the, the daughters. Because I, I don't know. I found that for the amount of time I've occupied the story, I never really, uh. I never was a bored. Mm-hmm. Ting ting stuff, um, but then we get sort of like the we get these glimmers of the next door neighbor action, which is where oh we have a teacher banging his uh, student's mom, very mm-hmm. class I wrote, um, but then you know what the baby's born, we got we got a baby now we got a baby shower but we got baby shower tension, um, mm-hmm. people are people are getting a little wasted drunk they need rides home whoa yeah and then uh 80 well he kind of gets left to his own devices at home uh where he leaves the gas on by accident or on purpose Mm. seems to be on purpose right yeah so i don't know we we (laughs) might we might may or may not have had a uh attempted suicide but perhaps yeah like i mean both times i've watched this like it had been a while since i had seen it and like this past week when i watched it i was like oh yeah he's for sure dead like he's on the on the bathroom bathroom floor floor there and i'm like yep it's uh yeah so we get that shallow breathing going on though Mm, yeah what if you just do that normally and that's just part of your life. Is that also like almost dead? Yeah, it's part of your life. <laughs> yeah, it's part of my life. That's what I'm asking. I mean, if you were a maybe, maybe if you were a, some sort of lich or something of like that, or some other form of undead that that's some that, sort of that, D&D that, thing? that maintains breathing. Ah, I see. I see. Do you think? Uh, no, I don't maintain it well. Do you know? Uh, I don't know if like David uh, Barenzo uh, holds his breath when he plays Angel on Buffy the Vampire Slayer, but something worth paying attention to. What? We're talking about Angel now. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Is he? Was he uh, ever time traveled to be a Nazi well, why, in uh, I, why know, World War Two? Well, I know Andrew Yang's real final project would have been uh, a film with him, but didn't happen. That's what was going to happen. Absolutely, I didn't just make that up at all. Mm-hmm. Interesting. 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 I'm going to do some googling. Okay, <laughs> you have to confirm this scoop. Oh yeah, Ed- Edward Yang. RJ. Edward Yang. Edward yeah, Yang. Andrew, Andrew Yang is that. Uh, Isn't that a politician? Guy. Yeah. Yeah. That politician. Yeah. So yeah. Andrew Yang. An- Edward Yang. Edward Yang. Yeah. Edward Yang. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. I totally know what's happening. <laughs> not, at the not, moment. Not the Chi- Yang Gang. Yeah. 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 Yang Gang. Sounds problematic. Somehow. 
Uh, let's see here. Oh, and so yeah, a couple of notes here. Part party party dude with ladies. Is that are they talking about you? No, uh, talking about a scene. Oh, that's the scene where uh, they go to meet Ato, uh, uh. Who's, who's now about uh, women's rights. Mm-hmm. Well, he tries to be right. He's a politician now. Uh, yeah, at his pool with a bunch of bikini ladies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, and then I just don't know of daughter whatever. Uh, and then, yeah, once again, I think they kind of touch upon what, like, I, I, I just kept thinking, like, man, the mother's the mother characters is completely not in this movie. Yeah, yeah, uh, and then of course I made the note. There's still an hour to go in this movie. Mm. I will note that there's a the scene where I think there's there's the date. Uh, there's like two dates going on uh, where NJ has gone to meet the Chicago ex, and yeah. uh, Ting Ting is going out with her friend's ex. Uh, and I, at some point, they're standing in front of a movie theater, uh, and there's some some posters for some 1999 films of such caliber as Phantom Menace. Wild, yeah. wild, wild Wild West. Analyze this. Oh. Uh, Tarzan. But the one that mm-hmm. I actually thought was really interesting was Pecker, the John Waters movie, which is about a young boy photographer. Oh. I, I didn't Did see a Pecker poster. That? Yeah. I, I saw all the other ones, but I don't remember the Pecker one. Th- that's the one. Yeah, it's got Edward Furlong with his uh, camera. But I was like looking yeah. at the poster and went, that's got to be Pecker. And I, and I confirmed it. That is That was the poster. Jeez. Was that your nickname in high school, Pecker? Yeah. Oh, there's there's Pecker jokes in there, RJ. Don't be don't in be where? saying in Pecker. Oh, okay. Don't you worry. Yeah, I saw the other posters. The Wild Wild West one was uh was nice. Yeah, I, I like that. And anal- analyze analyze this. I know you're a big um um Kevin Klein fan. Oh yeah, who isn't? No. Who isn't? He's a car- He's a recurring. <laughs> After on Bob's Burgers. <laughs> There's shirt. a shot in this though. I don't know why. It's like I think it's unintentionally really funny. It's, it's like, oh yeah, Grandma's still in a coma after the date. <laughs> it's like she just goes to like go like be cons- like, oh, my, the date didn't work out. Things didn't really. Pay- uh, it, don't things don't feel right? Uh, there, it, there's this, it feels off, and I'm gonna go hang out with my comatose grandmother. And it's like, oh right, she's still in a coma. I don't know. It's so odd. Where would you do it? You know, nah, where would you have a coma? It, it's almost like, oh, hey, by the way, that's that's still happening, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, sometimes I, you gotta check. I then write. This is like a combination of some very unappealing elements of a lot of Criterion films, from Italian neorealism, uh, kind of the uh, Ozu in his indulgence, uh, the, and as well as Wong Kar Wai. Uh, just these things where I was just like. Yeah, I, I don't really care about so much of the action that's like which, going on. Which things? Just what are you like talking the, about? The endless da- you... the, the endless dating. Uh, this focus, like, of why I should care about any of the characters' arcs or storylines. Like, they're just not mm-hmm. interesting. And like that, two hours and fifteen minutes in at this, I was just like, I don't care like about any of it. Mm. Um, and then I'm like, Interesting. Cl- clearly I'm, I'm uh, on the, on the <laughs> wrong side of this equation since this is his beloved movie, but I'm just like, I think mm-hmm. that like, I'll, I'll give me Equinox please. Um, Cause my next note here is fuck off. We get it. <laughs> uh, there is a sweet ass Batman and Robin poster though. There is a sweet oh, ass yeah. Batman and Robin poster. Mm-hmm. That is very true. That yep. is very true. Yep, and okay. then uh, then we get to the back to uh, Yang Ying's photos because he just yeah. he, he disappeared for a while, uh, and you get mm-hmm. these like um, these amazing photographs of the back of people's heads. Yeah, and it's like mm-hmm. it's like that's great. Uh, we get the weird fake out of kid drowning because <laughs> we get these scenes where, oh, it's yeah. like, where he's like kind of mm-hmm. like watching the girl that he likes go swim, and he's like kind of testing himself out about holding his breath like he's doing that in the sink in the bathroom mm-hmm. which again kind of raises like what's going on here there's this like f- suicide vibe to it but that's not what it is either and when he jumps yeah. into the water and doesn't come out it's like whoa what the fuck uh and then they kind of cut away from it but then you see the kids fine and he's like soaking wet and splooshing yeah. about so he the way i took that one jerk and reese you can interject too is 
he he wants to be closer to that girl and he's trying and he's and he's trying to learn you know and i thought it was a really sweet thing but then you do get scared because i was like oh shit i was like is this one of those movies i was like does this kid go down and i yeah. i was like i was scared for him but then i was happy to see him so well, that, I mean, uh, that that sequence actually worked for me is what i'm yeah saying. i think again like the first time that i saw this i was like oh yeah this is gonna be one of those movies right yeah. like yeah but uh i i did find like that that's a pretty like cute and effective you know uh interaction at a distance between them so i i i like that yeah yeah i i think they don't actually like ever talk to one another which i think is like i don't know like uh, outside of the girl yelling at him Mm -hmm. so it's it's kind of like that very juvenile elementary school stuff but it, it's like you don't really see that all that often in like a serious three hour long movie right so hmm. i like the way you put that an interaction at a distance i think that's good and i also like it too because even like what you could maybe call like the uh the psycho scare part of that where it's kind of just like you're like concerned about him you're like oh is this what it's gonna be I I thought that scene was earned too because it's like you know kids, not to be like blunt, but like kids drown all the time, you know, like because they fall mm-hmm. into pools or they're trying people, to learn how to people, swim. So people like, drown all the time. People drown all the time. So when I saw that, I was just like, yeah, I was like, this, this is just life, I guess. So I was like, is that where this movie's going? So I, I was scared for our boy. But then he wasn't. Was, uh, then, but then he was fine. But then he was fine, which is good. You know, <laughs> yeah, some kids I, some yeah. kids make it. Yeah. Well, he was right near the edge. He could have just, you know. Yeah, that's what I assumed was going to happen. But he never gets out, and you go, huh? And then yeah. we get, uh, we find out that the angsty boyfriend uh, kills his ex girlfriend's teacher lover. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I go he beats him to death. Yeah, and we get some video game style Taiwanese reenactment. Mm-hmm. Grand Theft Auto Two style. Or more, more, it's more of a fighting game style. Primal Instinct. There you killer go. Inst- killer Instinct. Primal yeah. Rage. That's yeah. the two. And then, oh yeah, Grandma. She's dead now. But we got we get kind mm-hmm. of yeah. That's great. Um, mom's mom. while you're on that. Sorry, just to you know this scene where the grandma and the daughter yeah have an interaction. What do you boys mm-hmm. think? Does that actually happen, or is that just the daughter's the daughter trying to uh, relieve her her guilt? Because Grandma has like. In that scene, she has, like, instant recovery, and she's better, but then the next scene, she's dead. So does that actually happen? I don't know. I didn't look into this. I'm just saying, is that real, or is that just the daughter? Because the whole her whole arc is how she feels guilty about the grandma yeah. having a stroke. So in my mind, I was like... It's imagined. I was watching it, and I was like, does she just imagine that this happens? Because she wants, she needs to get that out before grandma dies? Yeah, yeah. I think you could interpret so, it either way, but yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I I think that there's some closure there, no matter what, because, like, whether or not it's a hallucination or real life, uh, yeah. there's some closure to that, and the kind of guilt is absolved or whatever. But uh, I, I think, like, there's that part where there's all of the, like, medical staff, and they're in the room, and Ting Ting realizes that they're, like, Mm-hmm. picking up her grandma because she's died and she looks down and sees that she has the piece of paper that her grandma gave her right mm-hmm. so that uh, that always makes me think like maybe it was real yeah but yeah at the same time i don't know yeah i think it could be that's what yeah. i mean it's like i don't actually know that's why i'm asking it's yeah fun. what huh. do you think jared i don't care <laughs> okay uh, Jared Jared's heartless, so he Jared is in the arts not real camp tonight. Holy, <laughs> yeah. holy cow! Our art art is real, Jared. And maybe it's beautiful. Maybe it's it, beautiful. It, it wouldn't it wouldn't change my interpretation one way or another of That's like of being like indifferent, I guess. Um, That's fine. But mom, hey, mom, mom's back, and she's like, ah, oh, I could have been, I could, I should have been here sooner. And then we get the funeral wrap up, and. Uh, Tying up all those loose ends. 
And all I have to say is, I think we can all agree this movie is quite long. Uh, it's. It, I'm it, not it gonna lie. It, it, it went. It went. It's long, but uh, I watched it in one go. Mm-hmm. It's fine for me. Yeah. Started at six, ended at nine. I was like, paused a couple times for snacks, but yeah. uh, I watched it in one go. So yeah, it's a long movie, but I didn't feel the length of this one. So mm-hmm. personally. Yeah. That's just me, though. So what else, Jared? How, tell me more about how you like this thing. I don't. It's not great. Take it away. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, uh, my. Re- <laughs> wow. This guy doesn't wow. believe in art, Reese. Oh, my gosh. This he is... doesn't believe that art is real. Yeah. And that's sad, Dang. man. That's sad for you, Jared. See, uh, like, this... Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, do you... Usually, I let, I let the guests go. Do you want to go, or do you want me to no, kind of rip you up? You go for it. You go for All it. All right. I think this movie is very good, Jared. And I know you don't like it for certain reasons. I think that's fine. But I think this movie has a lot to offer. And I think it fits into the quality of movies that we do typically like. And by, I mean, typically, I think it fits into movies that we're usually kind of in line with. So... A lot of the big things I like about this. First of all, this movie looks great. It's real pretty. Lots of great symmetry in this movie, like the way they frame stuff, which I, I know is a uh, that's a tip in the fedora kind of comment. But uh, I do really like it. Like whenever they there's like scenes where people are like passing hallways and they're the door frame and everything else is kind of lined up very symmetrical. And I just think that looks nice. I also really like when the kind of out of focus stuff where it's like um it's never it's very soft zoom where you're not really focused on the people themselves but you're focused on like the window of the office and the people are kind of moving around in the background i like that i like that kind of filmmaking i i think that's really nice um so i think this movie looks really pretty which is nice and uh i actually un- unlike j dog here I actually do care about a lot of these characters, and I think a lot of their stories are relatable. Daughter, she's got gr- uh, grief and guilt uh, because she feels responsible, which is unfair to her. But, you know, that's what happens when people lose other people. You feel somehow you feel responsible for that or not even responsible, but you, but you feel guilt that you can't really like attribute to his things. And that's what guilt and grief is where you're sad about stuff, even though sometimes maybe you feel like you shouldn't be. So I think I, I get the daughter story. I like it. Um, the coming of age stuff with her boyfriend is just kind of there, which I think you that's one thing I think you could do without, but whatever. Uh, it's a slice of life movie, Jared. It's like shortcuts. Um, it, kind of. Uh, so daughter story, I get. The mother story, girl's got, girl has... Girl's got a breakdown, kind of. Not a mental breakdown, but she's having a hard time. She's got to get away. I get it. Uh, Dad, I think the dad story is given probably the most attention, and I do think it's it's got good buildup. The first interaction with the dad and his old girlfriend, I think, is very good because I think it sets up a lot of that stuff. And I think the um, the relationship they have is uh, it's one that. I, I like watching because it's like I think a lot of people can relate to this, whether whether you can or not, I don't know, but I think a lot of people can relate to that. Where you're like, um, there's this like uh, there's this thing that people have that they share that kind of goes above other things. Like these two people kind of move on, they have their lives, but they always kind of have this other thing, and that could be romantic or not. They, it doesn't have to be a romantic relationship. It could just be two friends, too, which is the way I see it, where it's like you can have friends with someone, you move on, but you kind of come back um, sometimes. Little boy story is awesome. I like it. Can't talk en- enough good things about it. Grandma's story, I like that, too. I think she's cool. She's cool old grandma. And I think my fit, like other than the little boy, uh, the Japanese guy, he's awesome. He's the coolest. Whenever, whenever he was on screen, I was just like, man, this guy rules. He's hanging out with pigeons. He's doing magic tricks. This guy's awesome. And he, he was just, he's a really cool, cool, sweet dude to hang out with. He had a wicked bowl cut. 
wore turtlenecks. I was like, this is easily the coolest character in this movie. So, uh, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I think this movie looks great. I do like the stories. So, uh, when I was watching this, uh, like I've heard about this movie a lot and I was like, yeah, I, I get it. I was like, I see why this one gets the, uh, attention that it does. So I like this movie quite a bit. What about you, Sugarhead? What do you think about Yee? Uh, well, I think, as I said before, I, I think this movie's awesome. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I think it's like uh, all of the character storylines. I know I said earlier I, I didn't really, I, I don't really vibe with the one storyline, the Addy storyline. Oh, right. Like, honestly, all of the the stories and like threads of the narrative are pretty compelling like you know yeah it is just a it's a story about a family really like i mean there's all kinds of intersecting um people within the family that um have different stuff going on so like Mm -hmm. uh, i think most of what i'm like what i take away from this movie is this idea of like only knowing part of the story only having this privileged viewpoint of your own stuff that's going on without being able to like fully understand other people and i Mm -hmm. think like that's a really nice sentiment that gets summed up in the end with the like yang yang's speech that he gives uh at his grandmother's grave right like i I think that's just like honestly like that speech at the end could probably be like you know a movie in itself it's like i I thought that was incredible every Mm -hmm. time i've seen it right um i I thought like you said the uh ota storyline is uh i mean like peak male bonding right like this has this has everything that i would want in a movie sort of and that's probably why it's like three hours long it's got to include all that stuff but it's it's Mm -hmm. like you know you've got these people who are saying like you know can can i get a second shot at stuff Mm -hmm. is there a second act in my life right like those Mm -hmm. kinds of questions that they're asking and then the answer coming back well not really right like it's it's kind of um bleak and deterministic in that way where it's like yeah you even if you had another shot at doing stuff again probably would just end up the same so it's like whatever but at the same time it's like that's a cool story too so Mm -hmm. um yeah i thought that the uh the symmetry in that date scene to contrast what Jared said, where he was like, I just don't care about yeah. this. I was like, the symmetry between this man and his old flame and his daughter and this new guy, it was like very cool coming of age type stuff. I, I thought that that was like, the shots were like mirrored back to back to back. Mm-hmm. And I was, I mean, that was pretty cool to me um yeah so i i thought that was very nice as well um i I mean the the whole like there are just parts that are put in like the um teacher who gets killed right Mm -hmm. like those are like i feel like topical inserts from like the time that this was made right like Mm -hmm. there's like teacher sexual abuse or something in there and so like i feel like this is very much a movie of its time but also uh a movie that like you can watch basically anytime without necessarily having knowledge of like um taiwanese culture and stuff um Mm -hmm. it's got amazing photography in it I, i think like throughout there's like i think probably five minutes in there's that scene of yang yang and it's like the back of his head right um and he's standing in front of a bunch of pink balloons as they're blowing them up 
and it's like well that's just amazing that shot i i love that and the one um of the balcony with all the pigeons and stuff so um yeah not not really much more uh i'm gonna be able to say about this i i think this movie as i'm talking about it is fantastic so yeah i agree i think it's good stuff i like this movie it's too bad jared doesn't but as we mentioned jared Jared owns many fedoras is jared here anymore i am He's oh, okay. <laughs> he, he was he was trying on fedoras for a while. Mm-hmm. He had that leopard print one. He had that all oh, suede yeah. one. Yeah, he was just trying to tip them, just ever so gently. Oh, I, step like, by I, step. I, I think this movie uh, comes with its own fedora. Oh, this one? Oh yeah. Well, the um, the samurai comes with its own fedora. One fedora and one cigarette definitely. Oh, yeah. Comes with that. Mm. Yeah, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's neither here nor there. Here nor there. Well, we got two, four, one against. So well, we I have like uh, what, is, what is this movie at here? It's got like a four point four overall rating with nineteen thousand seven hundred and ninety seven five star ratings, as opposed to sixty one half star ratings. Which I mean, obviously, this is yeah. I was just saying that. Yeah, this is not a half star movie that would be uh tedious <laughs> to be making that kind of statement but mm-hmm. uh it's kind of like in the middle for me like i just i don't know to it's me like, i'm just taken aback by uh how beloved this is because like there's nothing in this movie like even like visually i was like not that in love with any of it like from like like the cinematography it's like good i mean it looks like what movies should look like i guess but mm-hmm. never, nothing made me go wow i i love the photographs <laughs> like so I uh, I I think it looks great. So, I great. All I'll say is, <laughs> yeah, I do. I I get it. I get why this movie is loved. Is what I'll say. Mm-hmm. So I get it. Yeah, but you know, whatever. <laughs> well, the the, the be- <laughs> so beloved, but yes, whatever. Whatever. I get it. I I get it. I get it. No. Well, let's check out who who actually hates this movie. I don't know. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. Oh, I've got it right here, don't I? Yes, I do. And I know Sugarhead would love to read one as well. Sure. Mm-hmm. You, you got one for me? or um, I can... Well, I mean, you can pick one as well. I mean, I've got James Aldridge here who just wrote, uh, which I found fitting. Uh, considering RJ's mm. review, yee yee, more like I want to yeet yeet off a bridge. This person's bio says, Yes, I do like movies. Thank you for asking. They're from New Zealand. Wow. Oh. That, that's going to tell you something. Favorite films include La La Land, Gong, Whiplash, and Marriage Story, which I think speaks a lot to this person. You know what I mean? A lot of A24 films here, Reese. Midsummer, <laughs> Portrait of a Lady on Fire, First Man is at A24, probably. I don't know. Those no. are, I mean, that's uh, of, First Man is a good that, movie. That's what's his name? Isn't that La 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 La, La, La Man? I don't, know. I don't know. But this person half starred Yee Yee, and they also half starred Robin Hood Men in Tights, which is <laughs> They're... a terrific movie. Uh, yeah. Come on. That movie's great. They're basically the same movie. That movie's great. Basically. So. Yeah. What about... Um, how about Holocon? Gabe? Holocon. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll take this one, I guess. Oh, yeah. Uh, Holocon Half Star says, Perhaps I'm just not sophisticated enough to enjoy this colorless, storyless, pointless reel of shit. Wow. It's, I, mean, is, I mean, it is several reels. I mean... I, well, yeah. It's, it's so, three, three uh, hours long. Th- this person half-starred The Lighthouse. <laughs> and okay. they half-starred Seven Samurai, which is a movie Jared also doesn't like. But Jared, well, they also right. half-starred Brazil. Mm. 
and uh, uh, their their um their bio is don't mother buck with me don't buck with me I know ZBD so don't uh buck and buck with me yeah so they got that going for them yep two and a half stars to killing of sacred deer heavy heavy stuff guys mm. and the review for killing a sacred deer he'll definitely make a decent joker <laughs> so that's All cool right. oh Barry and two and a half stars for come and see too, which is what we've, we've talked about a few times. So, anyways, that's what that hmm. person's all about. Okay. Okay. Got one more. Uh, okay. Survivor fan. One star. That sucked. What are you on about? And it's like cryy faces. Throughout this whole film, I kept asking myself, when will something happen? The twist is it never did. This is a monotonous, slow, and long film with boring characters and unidentifiable themes. Personally, the emotions didn't work for me through the whole film, but obviously that's not the movie's fault because this is an emotional movie. The performances are not professional material, and there are only a couple of scenes that I was actually entertained by. Please explain why you like this movie. I promise I will listen to your opinion. You want to hear you want to hear a bio, Jarrett? From Survivor fan? Yeah. Yes, please. Nolan is my passion. Fincher loving film bro boys. Yeah. Film bro boys. Film bro boys. Spielberg, fa- Spielberg fans rejoice and pray a a since the film bro armies there. Tarantino flags will arise. Scorsese drums will shake the ground as the film bro boys get up and take a ache. Their own guns looking for looking revenge. Film bro boys. Film bro boys. Villa New is our own god. Blockbusters are our Bible. Superheroes cape shit media all. Those things are on our side. As the film bro boys flag just rises and keeps going day and night. Film bro boys. Film bro, boys. So weebs, hear this song <laughs> that shakes the ground and boils your blood. Cause we're coming and you're hearing. Yeah, you're hearing. Yeah, you're hearing. That's the film bro, boys, on top. Film bro, boys. Film bro, boys. Oh. And wow. If anyone wants, you can gift a pro account to survivor fan. Uh, they don't have pro current currently, but uh, if you want to gift them the pro, account, oh, the, can... is this an ask? No, no, it's just, it's, I, I see it on the top. I've never seen that before. It says gift pro. So, wow. Huh. Shocking. Yeah. That's uh, I, I tried really hard to get the cadence of that, but I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm not a musical guy. But I don't think that had a lot of rhythm and flow to it the way that it should have. Because mm-hmm. if it did, I should have been able to just get it. You know uh, what I oh, mean? Oh, no, you got it. Oh, yeah. I got it? Yeah, absolutely. Film bro, boys? Yeah. Film bro, boys. Mm-hmm. So that's so, that. W- w- anything else about what they, what stars they've given to things? Oh, oh. Uh, one star to Batman versus Superman. Damn. Uh, one star to Justice League. One star to Batman and Robin. Yeah. Uh, one star to the uh, 1984 Dune. Uh, we've got two stars to American Psycho and uh, three stars to Venom and three stars to Venom. <laughs> Let there be carnage. Three so, stars. You said. My goodness. That is OK. Mm-hmm. Interesting. That, se- that seems big league. Yeah. Bigly. 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 Wow. <laughs> Huge. Anything about film bros in those uh, in those ratings? Uh, Hard to say, uh, probably. Yeah, Hard to say. probably. Yeah. What, a, what an interesting person, hey? <laughs> interesting. Interesting. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. Well, Jarrett. Well, yeah. Any final thoughts on Yee Yee? I like Yee Yee. Yeah, I'll I'll keep watching this. Yeah. This is yeah. 
So Reese likes Yee Yee. Mm-hmm. I like Yee Yee. Jarrett does not like Yee Yee. Sad. <laughs> Check out Equinox, folks. Equinox. <laughs> yeah. It's got all the E you need. Yeah, that one's good, too. Yeah. Well, uh, that was a long goddamn show. After yeah. the break, we we pour one out at the funeral for our, our homeboy, Edward Yang. Who? <laughs> he, he doesn't have a ch- uh, chain gang. So you got a blockchain, though? Uh, oh, yeah. Definitely. On Yahoo. Big time? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, nice. He's, got, he's got those stonks. Ooh. 